I told you as it relates to faith, fitness, family, your finances, fun, and future, that under each one of these, you should have a very specific vision. Amen? And, and if you're smart, you will talk to God about that vision. And you and God will get together and decide that vision together. All right? So then after you do that, I told you I wanted you to write some scriptures around it. All right, so let me give you an example. Um, one of the promises that we'll talk about today, and we've discussed it, Jeremiah 29, 11, but I'm going to go past 11, and I want to show you something. I'm going to go past 11, all right? For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. So, so these, these are plans that God has for you. That's why I'm saying I'm hoping you're on the same page with God. And even in the midst of COVID-19, God's plan for me, God's plan for you, it didn't change. All right, I'm going to say that one more time. The plans that God has for us, it did not change because of COVID-19. It did not change because of the economy. So watch this. God has plans for you. And I'm hoping that you're going to be wise enough, smart enough, humble enough. Like, like, I hope you have the spiritual common sense that you were born with to say, God, if you got plans for me, I'll take your plans. Come on, are you, Jamie, are you hear what I'm saying, Jamie? Like, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll go, God, I got some plans, but if you have some plans for me, I'm, I'm willing to release my plans. I'm, I'm willing to, to relinquish my plans. <laughs> I'm willing to do whatever it is you want me to do, Lord. Amen. And so, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Come on, you ought to get excited. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope, come on, and a future. But so, so what I wanna make sure you do is that you actually write those scriptures around the vision, right? Because I, wanna, I want you daily to be reminded of what God said, be reminded of what God says he's gonna do, and be reminded of how those things are gonna look in your life once you allow God to do what he said he's gonna do. Watch this, I'm gonna blow your mind. 29, 12, and I'm just reading scriptures. I'm not even getting deep. Then you will call on me and come pray, and I will listen to you. Come on, and we've made it easy for you here at APOC. We've, we've got a prayer line pretty much every single day. So, so we're doing a noon prayer Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're doing a prayer Tuesday morning at 4.30, it's going all the way to uh, 12 o'clock. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, then we've got a, su a Sunday prayer call for you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We're praying all week. We understand what the scripture said. He said, then you will call on me. And so every day as you're going over your vision, you're not going to be selfish. You're not, you're not going to isolate. You're, not with, you're going to not withdraw. You're going to actually talk to God about everything that's written down. Watch this. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen. What a mighty God we serve. God is saying, not only are you going to call on me, not only are you going to pray to me, I'm going to listen. Watch 13. Watch 13. It's still going to blow your mind. It's still going to blow your mind. You will seek me, oh, come on, and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And so that's what I'm trying to tell you. You got you to gotta, you gotta get this your whole heart. You can't write this down in December. You can't write this down in January. You just can't write this stuff down and think that once you write it down once, that it's just going to happen. No, you're going to write it down. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to talk to God. And when you talk to God, let me tell you what's going to happen. God is going to reveal ideas to you. Like God is going to show you how he's going to take your faith to the next level. God's going to show you how he's going to take your fitness to the next level. Man, let me tell you all something. We came into the COVID-19. I was just praying, y'all. I was just praying. God told me specifically in January, he said, son, I just want you to walk on the treadmill. That's it. When we got into COVID-19, God was like, now I told you to walk. Now I want you to try to do an hour a day. And, and it was Jamal and, and, and Carl, you know, and CJ. And they all had these goals. And everybody started telling me their goals. And I promise y'all, I started walking strong January. Oh, Jamie, this is going to blow your mind. I, start, I was obedient to what heard in prayer. And God told me in February to do it. And then God told me in March to do it. And you know what happened when COVID-19 hit? God told me, now I want you to switch your diet up a little bit. 
And when we got to the end of March, the beginning of April, out of nowhere, my boy QDZ put up a challenge and said we're going to run 100 miles in a month of Oh, come on, y'all not hearing me in the month of April. The only reason I was able to do it and I found out, Rochelle sent me a text, showed me how many times I ran, and then she, I, I missed two days, and then she gave me my miles. I actually ran, Jamie, I think either 136 miles or 139 miles. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God had a plan for my fitness. God was like January walk, February walk, most of March, I want you to kind of walk, run, and then in the March, beginning of April, it was a full-blown run. Are you hearing me? I went to not being able to do two miles to doing at least six miles a day. I actually ran six miles a day, and then I walked three miles uh, on the treadmill doing the podcast. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God's got it. God said, come talk to me. Come talk. Watch this. And when you seek me, you will find me. So God is saying in your faith, when you seek me, right the vision, you're going to find me. God says in your fitness, you're going to find me. In your family, just listen to me in the morning. Listen to me in the afternoon. Listen to me at night. I'm going to tell you what to do about your finances. Come on. I'm going to show you how to have fun in your family. And then I got a future for you that's out of this world. If you think right now is something, I got a future for you. So I'm telling you, you got to put energy on it. Listen to me. I'm being honest. I need you to, look, I need you every day to erase everything you got on there. Erase it. Erase it. And then I want you to, God, in the afternoon, I want you to write it all over again. Come on. The reason why a lot of you is not going to happen for you is because you're not seeking it with your whole heart. That's a condition. One of the conditions is if you do this, you got to put your whole heart in it. You got to put your whole mind in it. You got to put your whole soul in it. That's one of the conditions. Oh, come on, somebody. And so we're going to write it down. We're going to put the scriptures around it. Uh, Jamie, do we have 29, 13, 14, or is that it? Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back. Come on, from COVID-19. I'm going to bring you back from COVID-19. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have met you. God is saying, I know because of COVID-19, you've been scattered all over the place. God said, watch what he said. He says, I will be found by you, and I will bring you back. Come on, come on. And so one of the things, I, I dare you, I dare you to embrace this. I dare you to embrace that God is going to restore what the locust stole. I dare you to believe that. I dare you God is going to give you back 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold, that everything you lost in March and everything you lost in April, and if you think I'm not telling the truth, amen, go to Job. Job's lost everything, and the Bible says at the end of Job that everything he had, God gave him double of what he already had. He gave him double the family. He gave him double the money. He gave him double the land. Come on. God is going to give you double for your trouble if you could just hold on and hold out. If you could just trust and believe. God's, God is going to turn this thing around. But you got to believe the promises of God. And even in the midst, amen, in the midst, hallelujah, in the midst of everything you see, you got to trust and believe. Amen. So here's the final thing I want you to write down. Amen. And we're just going to get into the promises. All right. I'm going to end with the promise. The other thing I want you to do for me, if you saw the video that we put out today, the video that I was talking about, the reason why you do this, the reason. And so there was a reason why I moved the way I moved at Michigan State, because I wasn't just thinking about Eric Thomas. I was thinking about Jalen Thomas. I was thinking about Jada Thomas. And so I moved in the way I moved so that my son could get accepted at Michigan State. I saw, somebody listen to me. Is somebody listening to me? I treated people a certain way because my son was coming behind me and my daughter was coming behind him. Amen, amen, amen. I did certain things for people. Amen. I served because, amen, my son was coming behind me and my daughter was coming. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that I made the moves that I made, amen, because of my family that was coming behind me. Hallelujah. And so one of the things I want you to write down, I want you to write down your baby's names. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on, Jamie. I want you to write your baby's names down. Amen. Come on. Come on. I want you to write your loved one's names down. Amen. Now, here's the two things I want you to ask yourself. You can write this down. Uh, amen. Or you could just, you, could, you can hear me and answer. All right. Here's what I want you to write down. I want you to think about, there's two questions when you think about, amen, your vision. How 
Will your family benefit if you do all the things that you wrote down? In the, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. I want you to think about it. Even as I marched across that stage, I thought about how is Jalen going to benefit from this? How is Jada going to benefit from this? And here's why I'm telling you to write that down. I don't know if this is the truth for you, but, but, but I know it's the truth for Jamie and myself because I know Jamie. And I know how dedicated he is to his family. Let me tell you something. The reason why I write my family names down, because there are some things that you will do for your family that you won't even do for yourself. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? There are some things, amen, that if you got to get up and take your baby girl to school at 8 o'clock, I promise you in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't know what it is, but something within will get you up. I don't care how long you've been up, you've been doing homework, amen, I don't, you've been working on a project, you've been doing your work for your job, it's, you went to bed at 3 o'clock. There's something within that will wake you up and say, it's time for you to take your baby girl to school. But I promise you, if I ain't got to take my baby girl to school, I promise you there have been times when I wanted to get up at 8 and I didn't get up to almost 8 o'clock at night. Hey man, you're not hear what I'm saying? Why? Because I was thinking about myself. And when you think about yourself, you can quit. When you think about yourself, you can surrender. But when you, when I, I said to myself, I have to finish this four-year degree. Listen to me very closely. I just want to be honest. For those of you who don't know me, you've never watched this ministry before, I want you to know that I was a high school dropout, right? I was fortunate enough to get my GED. I went to Oakwood University in 1989, which meant I should have graduated in 19... Hallelujah, 93. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, I probably should have graduated, amen, in 92 because I should have went in 88, but I didn't finish school on time. I declare to you today that in 1995, 1995, I had a 1.7 GPA, and I hadn't been in school in about two or three years. I left school in 92. I hadn't been in school in 93, I hadn't been in school in 94, I hadn't been in school in 95. But when Jalen Thomas was born, July, come on somebody, 20th of 1995, July, I went and got my butt registered back in school in August and I finished that four year degree because I didn't know want my son to quit because I didn't want, I quit, I didn't want him to quit. And so I got a degree so he didn't have an excuse. And then I went and got a master's. And when he was working on his four-year degree, I was working on my PhD. So when he was in school, I was at Michigan State in school. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? And then I put my daughter in the same position where she could go to Michigan State. I'm trying to tell you, you better write your loved one's name down because there are some things you won't do on your own. But when you start doing it for the loved ones, there's something within that I cannot explain. There's something within, and it gives you a push and a drive to do. And so I'm asking you the question, how will your family benefit if you make this happen? Look, you don't have a choice this time. You, I, I know, I know you got the sermon two, two weeks ago, and you all about that life now. I know you've been writing your vision board down. I've seen some of you put it on your refrigerators. You put it on your phone. I've seen some of you got it in the wall in your room. I see you. I see you. Congratulations. But I'm telling you, if you don't put, you like, yo, I've done this before. But if you don't put your baby's name down, and then here's what I got to ask you. How will it hurt them if you don't make it become a reality? Huh? I want you to think about that. Let that breathe. Well, well, what will happen? What cycle? I told my wife today, Jamie, uh, she just in the kitchen cooking a uh, 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 lunch, Jamie. I walked in there. I said, Didi, congratulations, sweetheart. She said, congratulations for what? I said, man, you did it. You got two of them through college. Congratulations. You two for two. I'm proud of you. You two for two. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, boo. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. you. You went to school. You graduated from high school. You went to Oakwood and finished in four. You went and got your four-year, she's a registered nurse, so she went and got her four-year degree after that. She went and got her master's, I'm sorry, after that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said, Didi, thank you for being, uh, keeping your credit score high. Thank you for having a bank account with some money in it. Come on, somebody. Thank you for having a job. Thank you for having benefits. Amen. You set your kids up for success. You set them up for success. And I'm telling you, there are those of you today, if you don't write your babies down, if you don't write your loved ones down, it's a wrap. Every winter, I make sure that my parents can get up out of Detroit. Are you, hear, are you hearing what I'm saying? And they can go wherever they want 
in the winter. And that, my mom has this little time frame, but I'm like, you can go as long as you want to go. And I make sure that I have enough money to sit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I challenge you to put your loved one's names all around that joke. I don't care if you have to repeat it. Keep putting their name, Jalen, Jada, Didi, Jalen, Jada, Didi. Just keep putting their name over the whole thing. Just keep writing their name down. I dare you to put their name down all over it. I dare you. Hey, man, we got nine minutes. Jamie, let's go, with, let's, go, let's go with the promises. Let's go with the promises. Hey, man, let's just end with saying, what is daddy saying to you? Hallelujah. He wrote it all down. What did daddy say? Daddy said, remember these four things. Number one, I will make a way for you. Come on. He's going to make a way for you. You don't, you don't have to look at this and go, how is he going to make a way for me? Don't do that. Don't do that. Watch this. Watch the scripture. Isaiah 43 and 16. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea and the path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and the horses and the armies and the reinforcements together. And they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things, don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Come on, say it in your living room. Say it with me. God's getting ready to do a new thing. Amen. COVID-19 ain't messed nothing up. God's getting ready to do it. Are you ready? God's getting ready to do a new thing. God told me the way you used to do conferences, listen to me, tell your squad, sit down and mastermind together. Tell your team that they got something more inside of them, that the way y'all used to do it, you ain't going to do it like that no more. Yeah, it's a new thing about to happen. Come on, somebody. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and in the streams of the waistband. God is saying, even in the midst of COVID-19, he gonna make a way. And you gotta believe that. Amen. Number two, watch what the word of God says. God says, I'm gonna fight your battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna fight your battles. Come on, come on. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from him. Are you hearing me? No weapon formed. God is going to protect you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He will vindicate you. Number three. Oh, I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Prayer is the best medicine. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Prayer is the best medicine. Amen. When you feel the spirit of anxiety, when you feel lonely, when you feel fear, amen, when you feel like you're being crushed on every side, God is saying, stop what you're doing. Don't call your girlfriend. Hallelujah. Don't call your mama. I'm a jealous guy. Don't call your daddy. Amen. Call on me, James 5, 15 and 17. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Don't you know you've been forgiven? Let nobody bring up your past. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another. Pray that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power. <laughs> and it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three, how many years did I say? How many years did I say? And for three long years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. God is just waiting on you to pray. God is just waiting to hear the desires of your heart. God is just waiting for you to call on his name. God is just waiting to see your petition. God can't wait. And you say, why isn't God blessing me like he's blessing you? Because you're not asking. Because you're not believing. Because you're not claiming. Hallelujah. Let's go to the last one. Let's go to the last one. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Watch this last one. And here's what the Lord says to you. Amen. Praise God. Trust in my timing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. But do not forget this one thing, 
my dear friend, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not slow. <laughs> the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. As some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Not waiting, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? God is not slow, hallelujah, in keeping his promises. God's got your back. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. As we get ready to pray, in the name of Jesus, I want you to go back over these verses on your own. Amen. If you don't have your own scriptures around, hallelujah, your vision board, you can use these. Amen. They are available to you. Hallelujah. 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 Write down exactly how you want to see your world. Visualize it. You have power in your thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on. As we get ready for prayer, listen to me. I want you to write down exactly not how your mama want to see it, not how your daddy want to see it, huh? not how your best friend or your boss or your mentor want to see it. No, no, no. Write down exactly how you want to see your world. <laughs> and visualize it every day. Talk to God about it. Why? Because you have power in your thoughts. Amen. Praise God. I hope some of this has been useful for you today. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Father, we come now. Hallelujah, Lord. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Be a fence all around. In the midst of COVID-19, Lord, be a fence. We thank you for life and health and strength. We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. And we know, despite what we see, this is getting ready to be the best year of our lives. We can sense it. We can feel it. We can actually pray about it and believe and receive. So, Lord, we come up against every plan, every strategy, every scheme, every plot that the enemy has set up for our lives. And, Lord, instead of believing the plot, the plans, the strategy, and the schemes, we would trust in your promises. You, you gave us the promises. We've read the promises. Now we're going to believe and claim the promises. And we're going to wait for your time, Lord, to see it all come to pass. Lord, be with those who we love. We wrote their names down. Be with them, Lord. Be with us, Lord, that we will not let you down. We won't let ourselves down, and we won't let them down. Show yourself mighty, Father, in the name of Jesus. Show yourself strong, Lord. And we will not take the credit when you bless us, but we will give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. Again, Lord, bless the things that we've written down. Bless them. We submit them to you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We submit and surrender our dreams and our goals to you right now, Lord. Our plans we give to you right now. And we ask you take that which is common and sanctify it in Jesus' name. Amen.